uh, right now it's simple because I only drag and drop a cylinder, rotate it, scale it, and then put it a material. But for more complex stuff, uh, you could create blueprints by clicking clicking on on all the stuff that you wanted to be a blueprint. I could create click on more than one object. In this case, I only want the coin. And I can go here on Blueprints and convert the selection to a Blueprint class. Uh, I could... There are a lot of methods, like three of them. But I don't want to use the new subclass or the child actors. I want to harvest the components. Because my, my Blueprint, I want to define the base class. I It may not be a static mesh actor. So I want to use the base class called actor. And using Harvest the Component will create a blueprint that gets all the components that I have selected and adds them automatically. So I'm gonna click Harvest Components and click on my parent class Actor. Select and it has created a blueprint that, well, is, is a coin. It has been rotated weirdly because this coin is the root of my blueprint. I cannot rotate it. I can only scale it. So, oh no, I'm gonna, yeah, there it is. So in order to have more freedom, I'm gonna create a scene location component, scene component, and I'm gonna assign it as the root. Now, this is a static mesh component, I can rotate it and I can move it around as much as I please. So let's put it on, on zero, zero. And that's how I want it for now. So now I have the blueprint. I can compile it. I need to find it. I don't know where, where it, it was created. So I can press Control B and it will show where the blueprint was created. I'm going to change it to blueprint coin. And now I can, uh, well, this was the coin that, that, that was created. Here is the cylinder blueprint, but uh, I can also add it, add more to my, to my map just by drag and dropping the coins. I will delete this static mesh. I don't need it anymore. And I will drag some coins to the map. Now, if I wanted to change the color of this coin, I can go here on the components of this blueprint, click on the static mesh and select a new, a new material. And because I'm changing an instance, then not all of the stuff is changing. But if I went to the blueprint and I change the material here to, I don't know, this rust that uh, maybe still, and I compile, then all of the blueprints will change. So it it's easier to maintain the consistency of stuff around the level. Let me return it to gold experience. Compile, save. And now it's like it was before. Let me return this to the default value. And this is not what I wanted. So let me just delete. No, delete. There it is. Uh, you can duplicate easily if you press Ctrl W or just uh, press Alt and keep pressing it and just drag the object. So it's easier to duplicate stuff. So what do we need <laughs> in order to return to our graph and have some sense of direction? What do we need to know if the player is touching the coin? We need some kind of, in, in Unity they call it collider. Here it's called collision component. So let's open the blueprint. We can right click on a blueprint and click on browse asset. It will show here or right click and edit coin. The control B or control E. Usually I use control E. Now here uh, to have a, an area where the player can collide with, I need to add a component for this. And I will find if I type collision that we have box collision, capsule collision, or a sphere collision. For this type of interaction, I would need a sphere collision. This sphere collision has been created as a child of this static mesh component, so 
I'm gonna drop it on top of it so they can be on the same level. This is sphere collision that I will name sphere call has their has properties that I can change. Every component has them. And we can find it in the det details panel. I want to change the radius, I just need to increase it here. And I can see how it changes also in the level. So I can know if maybe the, the radius is too much or it's too little. So something like this should be fine. Yeah, yeah, that, that's that seems quite nice. I'm gonna round the value just to be a little more clean. And now I need to know when does this collide this collision component will collide with my character. Just to be sure, we can uh, scroll down and find the category the category called collision. Here we have a lot of presets and talking about collisions and presets and defaults and channels can take a lot of time so we don't we won't bother too much with it right now we want we just want to know that it can overlap the pound our pound we said that is the representation of a, a character of an actor that can receive input so what can send input to an actor a player a player can send inputs and also the artificial intelligence can send orders to pound so yeah i want to overlap only with pounds and if we scroll down further here i can see all the events that this component can trigger in this case these are the two events that that, that i would need or, or well i only need the begin overlap so i just need to click here on the plus sign begin overlap click and it auto creates an event that will be triggered by the uh, this sphere collision if we want to know if this is working we can add some debug code like print and here we can put um, the collision has been overlapped i'm gonna save it compile and in my level play and oh because I was already in that collision, let me scale this map. Because I was already in the collision, it didn't trigger. Oh, and if you are struggling to put something on the ground, you can press the the end key, so it, it snaps to the to the ground. So let's press play, and there is the message: the collision has been overlapped. So we know it's working. So what do we need to do when the collision is overlapped? We need to give points to a player and hide coins to their collision. To give points to a player, we would need the reference of that player, right? Like we use the reference of the platform here, like this. But we can't uh, get it from the level. Uh, if we remember, to get the reference for this platform, we just selected it. And we went to the level blueprint, right click, and here is the reference, right? In the coin, we can't just click the third person character and right click it. It won't do anything because class blueprints are not bounded by the level. We can use this coin in any level. So there isn't a straightforward way to get the reference. In our case, because we're using a begin overlap, this node returns some values. The first one is the overlap component. This is the component that has been overlapped. In this case, it would be our sphere collision. And the other actor would be the reference of the actor that has been overlapped. In this case, this would be my character. So here, we could um, give the points to a character. Because giving the points would be a hassle to do right now and it won't help us too much on, on this example, I will add pseudo code, like type in here, give one coin to, and I want to add the character name here. So 
this in this pin i will drag and drop it out and press append so i can have more than one string the first string will be will be give on coin to and the second one will be the display name of this actor so i can drag and drop it on top and it will get the display name i'll compile it and whenever i play this third person character i would call it I don't know, Bobby. So I press play, I'm inside, and it says keep on going to Bobby. So we have um we've we have completed this part of the of the graph of the flowchart and also this part. We just need to hide the coins and their collision, right? If this pickup will not be I don't know, there are some coins or pickups that you get them and after some time they appear again then you just need to hide them and make them show up again whenever you need them but if they won't appear again in your game then you can just destroy them destroy actor so this way if we compile and save we can play and whenever bobby gets an a coin it's being destroyed that's a big coin <laughs> it, it, it should be worth more, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a golden one. Fair enough. <laughs> so maybe we want to, to it for for uh, to change that the value. We can add a variable here. We can make it called uh, coin value. Oh, here is the type. Uh, I want an integer because i don't want to give two two and a half coins to someone uh, coin value and here i will create an uh, i will create another pin here it is pin and i will give the number of of coin values like this two and there it is coin, coin value i believe now is zero i will set it to one but maybe I want this this one to be bigger, and this one will be um, maybe ten, right? If I want to change some values in the level, then this variable I need it to be editable in the instances. So here in the details in the details panel, we have instance editable. We can press it to true here, or we can just press this i icon if it's close you cannot edit it in the instances and if it's true then you can ah, i need to compile and now whenever i click one of these coins i can change that coin value to maybe 3 30 this one i want 5 and this one uh, 2 and it's not really good if all, all of them are the same size and give you different values. So I'm going to make them a little bit, bit just to keep consistency. And you, you pick up this coin, one coin. The other one is 30, this is 5, and this is 2. And the message changes. 